Hello, my name is Keith Elford and I am the priest in charge of St John the Baptist West Byfleet and this is Thought and Prayer for the Month for May and I'm recording it on the 10th of May, Tuesday the 10th of May. Now I said last time that I was going to focus these now more infrequent, these now monthly uh, thoughts and prayers on some of the big Christian themes and, and on I suppose, considering why we should take the Christian faith seriously, or why I think uh, we should take the Christian faith seriously. And last time I was talking about Holy Week and the way that um, the Christian faith embraces and does not minimise suffering. But now, of course, we are post-Easter and we have had the great celebration of the resurrection of uh, on Easter Day and we are still in the Easter season and I want to talk a little bit about the significance of the resurrection. Now once again I need to say that there is nothing I can say that will prove uh, the claim that Christians make that Christ rose from the dead and from a certain scientific point of view they're somewhat uh, difficult to maintain. But of course, the scientific point of view um, starts with the assumption that such an event cannot take place. So if that's what you believe, then you might have difficulty with the concept of the resurrection. I want to argue that the resurrection was a unique event, which in itself inaugurates a completely different way of thinking about uh, the nature of the world. But I'll come to that. Let us um, consider what we can say, perhaps, about the resurrection in the context of what we can say about the life of Jesus Christ. Uh, contrary to what I think some people have started to think is the case, we can be pretty confident about the basic historicity of Jesus' life. I think we can say with some confidence that Jesus was born, that he lived in Palestine, that he taught in Palestine and that he had some kind of following. And we can say with confidence as well that he was crucified at the hands of the Roman authorities. All these are pretty close to facts, in my opinion anyway. Uh, but I think what we can also say, and this is clear historically, is that his closest followers believed that he had risen from the dead and believed with this with such confidence and vigour that within a period of 300 years, or so, well, less than 300 years, in fact, they and their successors had um, established the Christian faith um, to the extent that it became the official faith of the Roman Empire and that there were millions of followers. So we went in a relatively short period historically from, you know, a maybe a few dozen close uh, followers of Christ, certainly the 12 that we know about as the really core followers of Christ, to many millions within a very short space of time. For them, the thing that made that happen, the thing that, I mean, you'd think, wouldn't you, that at the point where Christ had been crucified, the whole thing would be over for them. I mean, it had not gone the way that they thought it was going to go. It seems pretty clear that what they were expecting was some kind of um, final victory of God, some sort of liberation of Israel. And clearly that didn't happen. And you'd think, that therefore the whole thing would dribble apart. And it looks like it was on the way to doing that. The, the disciples were scared, scattered, disillusioned. And yet they came to believe that quite soon after Jesus' death, he rose again and that they saw him and they met him. Now, if the Christian faith is based on a delusion, which of course it could be, um, that's a pretty big delusion to be sustained uh, through death, travel, 
under, you know, travel was dangerous in those days, um, persecution, etc. Um, so if I find it difficult to avoid the sense that something happened, something pretty big and something that transformed them. So I think we have to take the set, this historical survival and indeed flourishing of the Christian faith as a, as a kind of serious piece. And then the other thing I want to say about the resurrection is said, I think, perhaps best by referring back to some famous remarks of a former Bishop of Durham, um, David Jenkins. I don't know if you remember him, but he became famous and somewhat notorious, unfairly so in my view, for saying that the resurrection was more than a conjuring trick with a bag of bones. Now that was taken, I think, to mean uh, casting doubt on the, the reality, if you like, of the resurrection, that Jenkins was trying to sort of spiritualize it in some way. But in my view, he was uh, saying something uh, absolutely orthodox and important, which is that for Christians, the resurrection isn't simply Jesus Christ coming back to life. The resurrection is a kind of transformation also. So that the Jesus we meet in the post-resurrection narratives is changed. He's on the one hand physical, corporeal, he eats with the disciples, he's in continuity with the person they know, and yet at the same time he's elusive. He seems to come and go at will. The disciples don't always recognize him, and yet he bears the marks of crucifixion still. So this sense of the resurrection as a transforming experience is right there in the narratives. And what I believe and what Christians believe and have believed over the centuries is that the resurrection is the first event um, in a transformation of the world, is the deposit, if you like, is the uh, promise of a complete transformation which will come. And so for Christians, it's not just a promise of eternal life, of some kind of triumph over suffering. And the way that it's presented in which Christ still bears the marks of suffering and so on, is it's not the negation of suffering. It's the triumph in, through, and in a way that gives meaning to the suffering. And it's that kind of hope which makes a difference to us personally. It's not just about some hope that we will now live forever, although eternal life is part of the deal. It's a hope that says the world we know, the life we know, will be transformed, is being transformed. And we have a call and a hope and a power in this which enables us to work for that better world in the present. That's what resurrection hope means in the Christian faith. As I've said, none of that proves it happened. But I, what I want to do is to convey to you how Christians experience it, what Christians mean by it, why Christians believe it, and why it might have a power worth at least considering today if you are not a Christian believer. If you are, of course, a Christian believer, what I want to call you to is to that full scope of that res resurrection hope and how that impacts on our life as a Christian community. That's more than enough for one go. There's plenty more to say, but that's more than enough for one go. And I have a prayer, of course. This is a um, Lutheran uh, prayer, um, a Latin original uh, in a modern translation. Let us pray. O oh God, through the resurrection of your Son, you bestowed life and freedom on the world to continue to give these your gifts to your people, that they may walk in perfect freedom and receive life eternal through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Thank you very much. I'll see you again in June and goodbye for now.